What is up guys, Fuad Abdulaziz back on Viper Sport with another episode of Punch and Munch. This time I'm joined by Nottingham's own Echo Usman, the welterweight English champion and the recently crowned ultimate boxer, uh, Derek Osaze. Guys, lovely to have you here. Thank you for coming on. Um, let's talk about your last fights first. You obviously faced Tyrone Nurse to defend your title. Yeah. Tyrone Nurse is a, is, a, is a pretty good name to have on your resume. Take right. us, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a, he is. So take us through that fight. Um, well, it was a, just, just a fight to get my name out there a bit, uh, show people that like I'm, I'm here, I'm a force, oh, yeah. I'm not messing around, I want to make an example of a name that's out there that people respect because I wanted people to put some respect on my name, innit? <laughs> a bit like Birdman said, yeah? <laughs> put some respect on my name. <laughs> yeah, so now we took Tyrone as, as the voluntary defence, yeah. um, a lot of people were reserved in their yeah. support they were like oh, i don't know if it, this is too early for you yeah, and this that yeah, the other yeah. but um well it was only your 10th fight yeah yeah, yeah. So, my, tra it. my trainer had faith in me i had yeah. faith in myself my manager has faith in me so um yeah we took the fight and uh don't get me wrong it wasn't an easy fight like yeah, i could yeah. feel the experience when i was in there in the yeah. first few rounds had a look at him i I knew it was awkward, but I wanted to see it and feel it mm. just so I knew what kind of a fight I was in. Yeah. Yeah. So in the first few rounds, I just eased, eased in with it, wanted to assert my jab, wanted to assert, assert, make him know that he can't kind of relax mm. at the same point. Because I knew he was the type of fighter, he'd be really, really, really sharp and awkward. Mm. So I needed to put it on him, take him out of his depth make him feel like he had to sort of rally to get points back mm. and that's when I'd get him. Mm. And um, it turned out, after the first few rounds, I thought, this guy's really awkward, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for, yeah, for part of our different, our different plans. I'm just going to take everything away from him and take him to the deep end. And uh, yeah. that's what I did. Yeah. 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 But what interests me is when someone <coughs> takes, a, you know, takes a level up, a step up in their career sort of thing uh, at any point, what is it that you feel different? Obviously the experience and stuff, but in the ring when you're facing that person, you're like, okay, this person has tons of experience against me. What's the sort of emotions running through your mind? You know what? When I was on the Great Britain squad, the GB squad, I fought a lot of people who were very, very, very experienced to where I felt you get in the ring and you just feel it. You feel like an aura. You're like, damn, everything I do is analysing it. You can see certain people are thinking whilst you're boxing. Do you almost feel like you're stepping up, that you're improving as the fight goes on? Like you're, you can feel your sort of ability to box is getting better right yeah, there and yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, boxing brain and boxing knowledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I got in there with, with Tyrone, yes, I felt it, but it was something that it kind of hit home to me. Like I've been here before, mm. like I've, got, I've been through this before. Just, it's, just stay cool with it. Um, yeah, there's pressure and that, but diamonds are made under pressure, so just yeah, go out there, true. be a diamond, just worry about what I do, and I that's that. all I did. I love that yeah. Diamonds. Um, and your last fight, I should say, <laughs> all in one night. <laughs> that's what we're cool, isn't it? Fight or fight? The ultimate. <laughs> the ultimate uh, challenge. The, first, before we talk about the fight, yeah. what a, a style of a, of a tournament it is. I mean, yeah, three yeah, fights yeah, in one yeah. night, yeah, non-stop. Yeah. Even if you get knocked down, get back up, it, it's crazy. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you sort of say, like, you, imagine you go out of the first fight, you win, yeah. yes, I've got the victory, hold on, shit, I've got another fight. Yeah, yeah, What's, yeah, yeah, what yeah. kind of mentality do you have to be in? Do you know what? Um, funny enough, like, uh, we, my coach, obviously, Byington Brown, a former professional boxer, now he was, he was in the prize fighter, so he kind of knew how the format worked, so our, our training was very structured and tailored towards the tournament. So, um, for instance, my coach would make me spar three rounds, take a break for 15, 20 minutes, even though I didn't want to, and then spar another three rounds and take another break to replicate how I would feel in the tournament. Um, so I think that was good for me because I was able to sort of kind of understand how my body would feel. Like I underestimated like the impact it has um, when you take a break, how your body comes down yeah. like, start start, completely. Yeah, yeah literally yeah. When, when you get into the next one, it's like, oh. But because we had done that inspiring, my body was really prepared. And you know what, I really enjoyed it. But I, I, my coach said, look, no pressure, we, we know what we're capable of, we know, like, that I don't think there's anyone in that tournament who could beat me, like, we knew that, so it was have fun, and, and, and I think I did that, and I felt amazing, like, I couldn't, I was sh shocked how, like, conditioned and how fit I felt, like, I probably could have done another two fights, like. Do you remember the fight again, right? Yeah, <laughs> funny, so, um, after the first fight, we just went back, I didn't warm up between the, the, um, the quarters and the semis, 
Um, we literally straight out. The gap between the quarters and the semis was very quick. Um, there was a bigger gap between the semis and the final because it had the undercard. Um, but yeah, literally just chill out, relax, um, get the towels over you, try to keep warm. I might have me sipping on some water. I'd had a cereal bar in between each of the fights as well. Um, kept my wraps on all throughout, but I just took off my gloves just to get my, my hands air out. And that was mainly it, like literally. Hit the pads before the quarters, didn't do anything before the semis, and hit a little bit of pads um, before the fight, and that was it. But yeah, I, I felt great, literally. Like after the fight. And how good going. is um, Dan's wraps as well? Yeah, the wraps were. He like, does your wraps, and it makes you feel like going and punching the ball. Literally. Like, my hands are indestructible. Honestly. <laughs> it was, um, <laughs> Tape yeah, pro yeah, tape yeah, one. Yeah, it was, everyone just says you cut it, they're amazing. Yeah, literally, <laughs> yeah. as in to the point of where I forgot I had wraps on for yeah, yeah, yeah. the best part of maybe four or five hours. Because um, yeah, yeah. I remember I was wrapped up maybe like 7, 7.38. I remember the last fight we came up just before midnight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I didn't feel it. Like it was, it was amazing. Like credit to my coach as well. But um, yeah, like, like it was great. Wraps always feel like you have yeah, to be yeah, nice. yeah. But, but it has to be done right. It has to be it done to right. Be, yeah, like, yeah, I remember yeah. my in my in my debut fight, my my manager Jimmy Gill did my wraps and, and he <laughs> he done them and he was like, I got rock. I've done your wraps. Good. You're gonna feel nice when you hit. Him. <laughs> it's gonna feel like you hit him. So I was thinking, okay, I'll yeah, let my hands yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So I've gone into the match yeah, and I'm like yeah. pinging this guy's yeah. this guy's head head with my jab and I'm thinking. It, it, there's not enough padding in these wraps. <laughs> this hurts. Yeah. It's experience though, yeah. isn't it? Because of my coach always asks, I was like, oh, is it too tight? How does it feel? I remember my first few pro fights, I didn't know how it was meant to feel. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. used to be an amateur wrapping your own hands, and it's like, you don't know what to say. I don't know how it's meant to feel. And so it takes yeah. experience, actually. Like, I'm more confident knowing how I like my wraps now. Like, yeah, I'll know when it's yeah. too tight and stuff. But I remember, like, he would, would wrap us up, and like, a few minutes before the fight, it's like, Ugh, my wrist. Ugh. You're like, uh, now can you change this? Can you like, change it? And it's like, what did you say? It's like, I didn't know what to say. But that, yeah, well, Dan it was great. Dan me up the other day, he's like, Echo is the worst person to do his rap. <laughs> he does them. Five minutes later, oh, can you change this? And then, oh, can you cut that? Can you change this? <laughs> but yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, important though, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, especially, yeah. especially in a tournament like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you well, don't want to get injured like after 100%. So you win the semis and then, oh, yeah, I've got yeah, this injury. Yeah, 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 so yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it was a great tournament, a great format. Like, I enjoyed it. I feel like I was just so much in the zone that like, the whole occasion blew over my head. Yeah. Like, you forget it's on TV. Like, I, f I literally forgot about even all the supporters that I had there as well because it just so zoned in, and um, I think that showed because, like, um, yeah, just I wasn't going there to lose, man. The conditioning's one thing, though, yeah. right? So you need the ability to cut, uh, sort of yeah, yeah. cool down and then warm back up yeah. straight away. But when you're in there yeah. and you win a fight and your brain's like, yeah. you usually like turn off, don't you? Yeah, How do you yeah, turn yeah. that back on more than your body? Do you um, know what I, mean? I think for me, it's different because how confident I was in myself and my ability, I knew I was going there to win. Mm. You take one fight at a time, but I feel like I always had the next fight in the back of my mind. Mm. Like in the first fight, for instance, against Taylor and Jones, um, after I dropped him in the second, I don't know if you noticed, but I know I probably, he won the third round because I sort of kind of took my foot off the gas and I just coasted through that round, knowing that I probably had the victory in the bag. Mm. I don't think there was nothing he could do to trouble me. And it was just sort of kind of managing the fight for that one more round, knowing that I had the semis coming up. Mm. So um, I feel like it is, to switch us over mentally, the way I see it is like, if I'm gonna have a 10 round fight, I've got to stay switched on throughout 10 rounds. Mm. But this one, I've got three rounds and I've got a break. Like really and truthfully, I should feel better. Does that, if that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think mentally it wasn't, it wasn't hard for me to like, I say like switch on again. And I feel like my coach, even the times when I may be getting a bit too confident and maybe lapses in concentration may happen in the round, like my coach makes sure, <laughs> he definitely makes sure that <laughs> you stay, yeah. um, you know, you remain, con you maintain your concentration at all times. So yeah, man, it, it was amazing. Yeah, he, our coach also spends a lot of time focusing on the mental, mental aspects, aspects of yeah. boxing. Really like, um, hundred percent. Yeah. Like, even even just simple things like, say, we train twice a day, every day of the week. Well, Monday to Friday. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't tell us exactly what, what we're, we're doing, doing yeah. in the sessions, so we just have to be, come to, to into the session prepared for anything because 
that's what happens when yeah, when you're yeah, yeah. when you're in a fight. Anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. You could start off good, something happens, yeah, and then yeah, it, yeah. It, it. People overlook that. Man. Or, or you could start off bad yeah. and then have to finish yeah, off yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So we're never really prepared. We're always ready to adapt. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think that's what he's is training probably emphasizes on us is um, adaptability. Yeah, yeah, It's mad because you can be so well conditioned, your cardio could be amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but once you step in and someone's about to take yeah, your head yeah. off, you're like, it's, it's it all goes game. out the window. Your hands yeah, are like yeah, yeah. heavy. 100%, 100%. Yeah. And I felt like even with the Ultimate Boxer, like um, even looking back at it, like it was, it was all intentional, as in like the way I boxed, boxed on the front foot aggressive, it was all intentional. Like, um, as in I noticed there was a lot of things that I didn't do. Do you know what I mean? There was, I didn't need to do any, like my mindset wasn't about doing anything fancy, trying to look good. Yeah. It was winning at all costs, do you know what I mean? Like it was making sure that my opponents would, would want to wish that they're not in the ring with me, do you know what I mean? So like, and I feel that that's a part of the mental aspect because once you've done all the physical, it's the mental aspect that makes you back down in your gums and say, look, I've changed you hard for this, man. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like sometimes when I needed a big round where a fight was close, I think that's where the mental side, like, you know, kudos on our coach and our camp really kicked in, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the mental aspects are so important, man. Definitely, 100%. Just going back to you, you mentioned you were on the GB squad. Uh, we had uh, an ex-GB uh, fighter last week, Dalton yeah. Smith. Uh, uh, we, yeah, yeah, we spoke about, obviously, being in the GB camp. It's a very um, almost intense but very memorable experience, I'd yeah, like to say. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What was your sort of experience there and what did you pick up and learn the most, do you think? Um, just dedication to your cause yeah. um, and there's, there's a lot of different aspects to it because being on GB is very mentally tasking. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's for everyone, not, a lot, like not every boxer could get into that environment and, and blossom. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of pressure there but um, it makes you into a better fighter and yeah. you get so much experience from it. Um, training camps after GB won't really phase you as much because you think, mm. Well, I've been here before. I, um, I know what to do. I can adapt and all and everything. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a really good experience to go through, especially for an amateur looking to turn pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people say um, that, regardless of the training, the friends that you make there, the people that you meet, yeah. uh, is one a hell of experience because yeah. you're in and around each other all the time. Who 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 are you sort of close to? Who do you sort of? Um, I was close to a, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I was close to Joshua Boatsy. Yeah, yeah. I was close to Sam Maxwell, Sean McGoldrick, yeah. Cody Davis. Um, <laughs> I had a laugh of Felix Cash and um, the McCormack yeah, yeah. twins. The McCormack well. twins are crazy, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. They are very crazy. You should see. I saw him. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't a GB, and even I know. That. Like, I'll just put it like this. I saw him. I saw him once at the. Uh, it was one of the fights that I went to recently, I can't remember, I think it was in the Liverpool card uh, where uh, Fowler faced um, Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, s I, yeah, I went into yeah. the toilets and I saw them in the toilets and uh, obviously they must have been off season, so they had a few <laughs> drinks. They were just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> out, uh, stuff. Even, even, that. even when we was away at, at training camps, them too, the, the, everyone had to watch out, keep them in line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're very talented, they're nah, probably, nah, very yeah, talented, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned Joshua Watts as well, fighting in New York yeah, this week. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It just goes to show, I think, GB having the right connections as well. Um, you see some of these guys, they're doing amazing. Yeah. And yourself as well, English champion, that's a, that's a big, big um, title uh, uh, to have at this stage of your career. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, well done to you guys. We're both, we've got champions, so both of you guys. How did you come about sort of being friends? Where did you guys meet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, cool, I'm gonna start off with this one. So. <laughs> So, funny enough, right, um, so obviously I'm originally from London, that's where I grew up. So I came to the University of Nottingham um, at Trent. Um, so... That's where the accent's from. Yeah, that's where the accent's from, yeah. Like, that's <laughs> not that's from. Literally, so I grew up in South East London in a place called Peckham. And, yeah. um, so, so when I did come to Nottingham, I think that's where boxing really took off for me. Mm. Um, and I remember at the time as an amateur, like, I used to hear about Echo a lot, because at the time Echo was, he was sort of kind of, I'd say flying the flag for amateur boxing in Nottingham. And I remember yeah, I used to, GB, yeah. yeah. And even before you got into GB, mm. I remember like there was a big, um, he had quite a, there was a buzz about him because I know he was doing a lot 
um, an amateur scene within Nottingham and at the time I think that like, it was on the cusp of getting to gym. I remember seeing articles and stuff and there were so many times we would be running <laughs> and we would run past each other and I was yeah, like, what's yeah. I know this guy? I've seen this yeah. guy's face before. And I'm sure a few times he looked back and, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. and even so I was sure because I'd see him running his GB kit as well. And, um, so, um, yeah, it gets me into what are you looking at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, at, <laughs> so at the time, our two amateur coaches, um, yeah. they were friends. So I remember there was one time where we, um, I think we actually did some sparring. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it was it. after that. Oh, that was the funniest position ever. Like, I remember the first ride, I'm sparring with Echo and I'm jabbing him thinking, hey, I'm doing all right. I'm with a GB guy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I remember the next ride, I feel like he was just downloading data because every <laughs> jab I threw, I just got punished. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But um, it was really after that spar um, that we got talking and stuff. And it was crazy because I'd been through a lot of, I had a, had a lot of setbacks and challenges up until that point, injuries, you know, missed competitions due to com like factors out of my control. So. I was really um, starting to lose my head a little bit in boxing and I was really considering, you know, kind of packing it in because, yeah, I was just getting a bit tired and at the time after that spa, we started speaking a lot and then, like, I always tell Echo, he doesn't know how instrumental he was at the time and sort of kind of help him pick me up again, do you know what I mean? So, I think from then, like, we got talking and I would see him training with my current trainer now, Byron to Brown on Facebook and stuff and I just messaged him one day, I said, look, well, can I come down to your gym? Like, would your coach train me? Because at the time, I thought like the something that they were doing was like it looked it looked proper professional. It just it just looked like a next level. And at, at that time, I was thinking, hmm, this doesn't look like something that's open to everyone. It looks kind of exclusive, mm. isn't it? <laughs> and that was it. And the rest was the rest was history. We became stable mates, and like as in, there's anyone that I feel like that's kind of had a massive impact on my career, someone to look up to is this man sitting right here. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So like... Nah, this guy, this guy, nah, I man. need this guy in camp. Nah, when Derek is in there, camp's a flat, man. Nah, man. so we bounce <laughs> off each other, man. And like I said, like we, we, we train hard, but we laugh hard as well at the same time because a happy boxer is a dangerous boxer. Mm. So I feel like with our camp, these two boxing academy, we stand for dreams coming true, you know. Like I said, we're, it's, a, it's a real good family. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like there's a buzz around the camp now. Um, there's like the current, Pro boxers at our camp now are undefeated at the moment as well. Yeah. So, yeah, man, and then kudos yeah, to our coach. Some of the others, obviously, you Yeah, so there's obviously me, um, Echo, um, Sebastian Sluzer, light heavyweight, he's 5 0, um, three stoppages. Paul Thompson's 4 0. Um, we have um, Delmar Thomas, um, he's 3 0 as well. Yeah. Um, we've got Ben Douglas, he's yeah. 2 0. Um, who else? Um, Joe Hughes, he's yeah. just made his pro debut, you want to know. So, I think there's about 35 and all between us. Yeah. So yeah, so <laughs> I relati stable, uh. I relatively yeah, yeah. in the boxing world still a quite a new camp because um like I said, I, I made my pro debut in December twenty seventeen. Echo you was uh, a year before. December twenty sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So and Echo's probably had the most pro fights, you're on ten now, yeah, I'm on nine. Yeah, 10 so nine. um so yeah man, it's just it's just a great, it's amazing and like yeah, I love it man and I, I know things would be a lot more different if I wasn't part of this camp. Yeah. I just want to talk to you about something as well. Um, talk to me about your sort of upcoming upbringing uh, as a child, because obviously you were born in Botswana, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. And um, just give us some, you know, because it's, I was born in a different country as well, so you always have that different experience to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, take us through it. Um, well, yeah, I was born in Botswana, brought up by um, Ghanaian parents. Oh. So I had a Ghanaian upbringing in Botswana. And yeah, um, yeah it was just, it's just different. Like, yeah. obviously, like, life in Botswana, how, how people are, obviously the weather, <laughs> <laughs> um, and just the custom and whatnot. Um, so at one point, uh, my dad wanted to get a PhD in education. And at the same time, I was going into secondary school and he thought it might do me a bit better to get my secondary edu education probably um, up, well, in England or like get a Western education. Um, so I came over to the UK with my dad whilst he did that and obviously, um, yeah, got dropped into secondary school, had that bit of culture clash and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it was, and it was especially because when I was in Botswana, I got taught American English. Mm. So when I came over here, everyone was like, what, are you from America? Because I was saying, <laughs> saying things like sidewalk and curve <laughs> and... Um, yeah, 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 I'd, I'd, yeah, and I'd say yoga, so yoga, and people would just, people would just rip Is that me. from like watching films and stuff like that? No, yeah. that's just... The it's, it's, the, it's the way actually, they teach yeah, it, because yeah, um, uh, yeah. that's a certain way as well. A lot of countries, they, t they teach American English, and yeah. you see uh, kids who come over from different countries, they always have a... Um, 
That, that, the English is fine, but they don't have like an American accent. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. in Nigeria as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah same, same, same. I know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I got used to the culture. And, do you wish uh, you can go back? Or do you prefer the Nottingham accent? Um, I mean, the accent, no, I prefer the Nottingham accent. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, I'm cool with that. It's calm. Yeah. Uh, I would love to go back and visit Botswana. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't want to live there per se, because um, everyone that I know and love from there had moved out of there. Like everyone from my, from when I, all my siblings and just family and close friends, they've all moved out and spread across the world. Somewhere in America, somewhere in um, the Netherlands, somewhere in you won't need, yeah. You won't be needing a hotel if you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm good, but I do want to go and visit Ghana. Yeah. I've, I've visited before, but I want to go and visit properly. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I think roots is very important. I think when people. Um, people come from different countries, I come from Bangladesh myself, and it's just yeah. always great to go back and see yeah. where you're from, yeah. um, where your roots are from, and really how, how blessed you are almost, you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, there's most countries, because we live in probably one of the best countries in the world, yeah, really, for yeah. opportunities and chances, yeah. we always forget where we come from and you yeah. know what we could have had, almost. Yeah. Uh, so I think that, that is important that you're... That yeah. yeah, but I do keep it in mind. I mean, there's certain aspects from my life um, coming to the UK and whatnot, that also gets reflected in my boxing because mm -hmm. um, like when, I, when I break it down, I like to think of my style as a very technical style, but it's my adaptability in fights yeah. that helps me the most, that yeah. how I adapt to things. I think that's something that's echoed throughout what I've been through in life, like coming over from the UK adapting to the culture, yeah. adapting to the language, adapting yeah. to this, adapting to that. Yeah, that almost goes back to what we were talking about, the yeah, mentality yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that adaptability, yeah. I think it, it's key because like, like say in my last match, I came out, I felt sharp, I got cut in like the second round, yeah. I, had to, I had to adapt to that straight away. Like, is the cut bad? No. Is there blood in my eye? Yeah, yes. Yeah. How, can I get, how can I get over that, over that and still box to a good degree? You just have to adapt, adapt, yeah, adapt. Sure. And I think that's what makes good boxers yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay, I just want to talk to you about something. Uh, you, your sort of career outside <laughs> the ring is yeah. very interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's not like everyone else. It's, um, so if, if you guys didn't know, Derek is a priest outside the ring. Yeah, well, actually all day means I'm a youth pastor. Oh, okay. uh, a priest is a bit different. Uh, a priest is in the Catholic church. Like yeah. uh, Differences between me, a priest and a pastor, that a priest can't get married, um, whereas I'm married. Um, so, um, first of all, it's crazy because like, people refer to it as a career, like a side job. It's not even a career, a side job. Like, if you wanted to give it an official term, it's a, a completely voluntary role. Do you know what I mean? Um, me being um, a minister and a youth pastor is basically off my own beliefs and my faith. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's, I've come to come to terms of knowing that it's quite unusual. Yeah. Well, when you when you put when you put the two like <laughs> peace, yeah, yeah. violence, where does it where does it correlate? You know, it is. I get this question all the time, but for me, it's like um, when it comes to boxing, right? As in, you you'll be surprised that you know boxers don't even see themselves as violent people. I think no, boxers no, number no, one. Like, it calms you down. It's a gentleman's yeah, sport. Yeah, like, that's why well, I got into boxing. It calms most people. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I got into. You only get the odd people like uh, Prince yeah. Patel who. who <laughs> You know, I've met him, he's a no, calm you know what, in person, because I've met him a few times, yeah, see, he's, he's, he's actually all right. Nice guy, I don't know if yeah. he's, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to judge yeah, the man because I've yeah. never met him face yeah, to face, yeah. but from if he's, if he's judging from, from interviews, yeah, 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 yeah. it just doesn't seem like I the nicest people. people do stuff like that to sell a persona, to sell fights, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, but he, he's yeah. all right. Yeah. It, it would sell in America, but yeah. here, they don't really like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I think the point why it's not selling here is because he's not necessarily, in all due respects, he's not, gone out there like for example in the same division you've got Sonny Edwards who's yeah, fighting yeah. on the shows and he's fighting yeah, decent yeah, people yeah, yeah. and winning titles. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, I think the British probably don't fight. really resonate with the trash talk as much you know nah, it's an nah. American thing like, yeah, I think they just definitely. like the humble person to down to earth to this day but yeah like boxing, boxing, boxing was a life changer mm. man like that's why I got into boxing to keep out of trouble like by the time I got into boxing I was young I used to deal with anger management um, so I played a lot of sports but a disciplinary record wasn't the greatest, yeah, like yeah. almost got kicked out of school and stuff. And so, um, like for me, I see boxing as that's my profession. You know, we're not going there to hurt people. You know, we no boxer would want and the other their opponents to sustain injuries that yeah, would stop them from doing the yeah. sport. It's 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 I, I see it like a martial art. It's to hit and not be hit. 
So um, when it, the boxing side of things is, is purely competition, yeah. it's nothing personal. Do you know what I mean? And then um, the the my ministry side of things is, is to do with my faith. That's just me. That's my life. You know what I mean? That's like the foundation of everything I stand for and everything I believe in. So like I, f I feel like for me there's a, there's a there's a very clear distinction. Do you know what How I mean? does it work with uh, alongside your training? How many sort of I don't want to say hours because yeah, 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 I mean yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, a job yeah. like yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Religion's obviously yeah, very yeah. different to a yeah, nice yeah, job. Yeah. So how does it work? Where, how do you work around boxing? I think first of all, it's, it's great that like with both sides, everyone that I'm surrounded by in boxing, be it like you know my coaches, uh, my stable mates, and everyone in church, they are both very really understanding of what I do. Do you know what I mean? Um, so um, my coach understands that you know on the odd day where like um, I, I have to be at maybe a church event or something, I need to be somewhere. He's understanding that he knows like what I'm doing and stuff and vice versa with the church, understanding that I may not always be able to attend every engagement because of training and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to have a great balance. Like I've got an amazing support network from both sides. And well, like on a, if you're talking of like time-wise, like you'd obviously normally find me in church on a Sunday, maybe for a couple of evenings a week if we've got meetings and stuff, because obviously I lead a team of people and stuff as well. And obviously, you know, being a youth pastor, um, there are a lot of, let's say, off the hour um, things that you deal with, like, because, you know, you're a, bit, you, you're a mentor as well to some people, like, I offer a lot of pastoral care and support, which means that, you know, from time to time, I do spend some of my evenings just speaking to people and stuff, especially because in Nottingham, we get a lot of university students that come um, to our church and you can imagine what university is like. You're going through so much stuff, so yeah. it's good to sort of kind of speak to someone who's kind of been there, seen it, done that. So it's great and I love it because um, like for me, I feel like my faith has helped me so much um, in my life and I feel like I wouldn't be where I am now if not for my faith. So I feel like that's something that I want to kind of share with everyone. Yeah. So yeah, man. I Just it. explain, I know I was joking about it yeah, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how violence and, but I do understand the, Boxing, even though it's looked at violence because what we what yeah. entertainment people see is, yeah, is that, but yeah, yeah. the whole training aspect, the whole when you're in the ring, you're not really thinking to hurt the person, it brings yeah, you down yeah, to yeah, a level yeah. of peace after you're just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. even after like a training session, is almost a yeah, relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how does that impl Im implement into the sort of being a pastor? Because I, I guess maybe if you weren't boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be in an angry past, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you were, but you know what I mean? Um, do you know what? For me, it's like, um, the distinction for me is like, okay, when I'm in the ring, and this is why, like, I didn't really used to like my nickname, The Punching Preacher. When my manager, Jimmy Gill, first gave it to me, I thought it was like, okay, this is kind of taking the mickey. I don't want to come across like a WWE yeah. character, or like as a gimmick, but, um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> it makes sense because I do punch and I do yeah. preach, do you know what I mean? Um, like, it's not a lie. And I said that the ultimate boxer, you know, when I'm in the ring, I'm punching, I'm not preaching. Mm -hmm. As in, so you would make a mistake to, to get the two mixed up, do you know what I mean? I get a lot of funny, like, wow, like, you don't box like a preacher, but how does a preacher box? Am I meant to go in there and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gentle and stuff, as in, as in like, so when I'm in the ring and the bell goes, I feel like it's just completely, it's about adapting to my opponent and the objective is to win. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I always wish well for my opponents. I pray for my opponents as well as I pray for myself. So there's a clear distinction. And then um, with um, the church, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, so I feel like boxing and um, my, I'd say my, my faith, I think we're all part of one journey where I, know, I feel like they were always going to coincide. Mm. So I feel like God was the one that led me to boxing because it kind of put, you know, boxing was a sport that kind of just helped other parts of my life fall into place, if you get what I mean. So I can't imagine a life without even one of the two, do you know what I mean? So that's why I couldn't even imagine, okay, what if I didn't find boxing or what if I didn't find church? Because it's hard, because they're, it's like t removing two pillars from the building. Like you can't just imagine what it would be like because it's just like they were meant to be there. So yeah. I mean, I want to ask you the question then because it, every boxer, um, it seems like always has something else like obviously with you it's it's yeah. uh, being a pastor with some people it's their family yeah, yeah. Um, there's always the other side of a boxer that when you get to know him you, you find whoa 
this guy's not violent at all. He, yeah, he's got yeah. such a nice, or yeah. he's nice with the family. This, what sort of keeps you on that side as well? What, what would you say? <laughs> I'm the biggest geek you'll ever know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the biggest yeah, geek. I'm part of that as well. I'm a prankster. I like, we love jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, nah, since I've been young, I've always been into computers and everything. Yeah. Um, so when I, part of my education, I did um, a degree, well, I did my A-levels in business studies and media studies. Mm. I went to uni and did a degree in marketing. Um, out of uni, I came out of uni and I went into a web developer, web developer job. I'm um, as a junior web developer for a big like group. I was working on about 40 different websites like every day. I, I was doing that as well as doing my trials for GB and then I did that whilst I was on GB for a bit. And then when I got onto Podium and got offered full time Podium, I, I just obviously once in a lifetime opportunity, I just thought I'll stick with it. But um, yeah, no, I still, I still delve into a lot of um, yeah. tech, tech stuff. And at, at the moment, aside from boxing, um, I also, I'm also part of a partner in a photo booth and magic mirror business. Okay. And we attend um, weddings, um, corporate uh, occasions, and just normal parties as well. Yeah, yeah. Set up photo booths, people have a good time in that. Um, mm. But we also build them as well in magic mirrors. That's where, that's where the true, True geek in me <laughs> comes <laughs> forward. Uh, um, setting up the programming, getting yeah. setting up touch screens, yeah, yeah, yeah. building stuff. Yeah, love it. <laughs> you need to hear Echo explain some of the stuff. Like, I feel like he starts talking his technical language. You don't know understand. Like, <laughs> they call it like you know, it's field specific. It's a bit like when you talk to a doctor and like he just says all it. Yeah, literally. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I get you, Echo. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, so that's what happens when you do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, seeing as though we're on Punch and Munch, it's a, a food uh, episode. I can't eat because I'm fasting again, so oh. a bit of a shame. Oh. But nutrition, let's go into, let's dive into that. Okay. Talk, uh, talk to us about your nutrition. How does it work? How do you guys make weight? What's uh, what's the process for you guys? <laughs> my, <laughs> my making weight is a very complicated process because okay, um, yeah. obviously I'm welterweight. Yeah. I'm pretty big for a welterweight. Um, so I have to get my body weight down. I lose a lot of body fat. Um, I even got mine tested the other day and I'm six or seven weeks out from camp, from my fight date, my next fight date, and my body fat is at, what was it? Four percent. Four percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this guy who's testing me is like, what, you're four percent? Four percent. And you're seven weeks out. And but you're going to be six percent after this. Wow. To bring it in. <laughs> This is my type um, of thing still. Yeah, but I, I, I do enjoy bringing the percentage back up. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to say that now, aren't you? <laughs> so uh, once this food, once we've uh, wow. just yeah, explained wow. this, Jacob's going to take over this position and uh, <laughs> enjoy some of these nachos. So we've got some chicken nachos, it looks like, chicken loaded. Um, is that a quesadilla? Would they call that a quesadilla or is it a massive taco? I have no yeah. idea. And a cheesy burrito, that was there last time. Um, actually, they, that's been there each episode and everyone's rated that, so that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got one more by the looks of it. What's that? That's a chimichanga. Yeah. Chimichanga, chicken nacho, and a quesadilla. Okay, sweet. Right. Wow. Cheers. Guys, yeah. it's There we go. So, uh, <laughs> Echo's body fat percentage by looking at this has gone up to 10% already. <laughs> it's gone up just looking at it. I'm yeah, confused yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you guys into Mexican? Yeah, yeah. Mexican food? I'm into food. Uh, food is good for me. <laughs> if you ask what my favorite restaurant is, my, my wife will testify to his taquitos. I'm a big burrito guy, wraps, tortillas, like, uh, and chicken. Like. Your heart must be pumping right now. <laughs> if you ask about my diet, it includes a lot of chicken. Of chicken. Every time Echo asks me after chicken, like, what are you having tonight? Chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um, similar, like, like a lot of. Um, like making weight and stuff like lean, lean protein, mm. like carbs. I'm, I'm a very boring eater. Mm. Um, I can stick to the same meal four or five times a day, seven days a week for eight week camp. Like, and that's just, I'm just used to it. Oh. Like, I don't know. I don't, I'm a bit different. I have yeah, to, yeah. I have to Mix vary yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I have to make it exciting. Is there a certain yeah. diet you follow? Cause there's loads of diets out there right now. Yeah. Like, I fluctuate between a few. Sometimes yeah. I, can, I can eat vegan for maybe a few days or yeah, yeah. maybe a week. And then I'll go into, uh, keto diet, so I'll get into ketosis and then yeah, burn yeah. my body fat. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why it gets low at times. Um, I come out of that, I'll, I'll, and then I'll just watch my calories yeah, at times. Yeah, yeah. Depends where where I am in camp, because um, obviously 
at some stages in camp you just want to lose weight at some yeah. stages you want to obviously strengthen and condition certain yeah, parts of your yeah. body but you've got to feel, feel yourself to do that exactly um, yeah. and you just have to do it you, everything's all right every diet's all right but you need to do it at the right time yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah yeah no i was just saying it's interesting because like for my diet like when i'm making weight i need to eat more because um, I, I, I think yeah, I burn weight with um, metabolism. Okay. Yeah, so like I've always had a notoriously slow metabolism. Like when I'm not training, I could go long periods without eating. But when I am in camp and I need to get my weight down, I need to basically, like I even set reminders for my meals. <laughs> so I would time them like at least, try to eat something at least every three to four hours. Um, and basically like quite smaller portions as well. Um, so yeah, so I feel like with diets and stuff, there's so much out there about do this diet, that diet, but I feel you need to find what works for you. It's trial yeah. and error. There's yeah. things that work for me as an amateur, but that don't work for me now. Like your body's always constantly changing. I think you have to look at you have to look at your surroundings as well. See yeah. how you sort of your relationship with training, your relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. with food, your relationship with your sleep. Yeah. I think all of them factors fall into actual nutrition because yeah, 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 yeah. without adding up the factors, you're just going to be someone with a shit plan, plan yeah, really because yeah, yeah. you, you might not fall into what you exactly. what, what you need exactly. but we won't waste any time because i'm getting hungry looking at it jacob can come in and sit sit down and enjoy some wow, nachos wow, 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 wow. we'll turn the camera off so they can enjoy some food the lads have just devoured themselves wow. in some mexican while i watched patiently five more days guys and i'm nearly there <laughs> how'd you enjoy the food guys I was amazing, oh it was great man. man yeah it was good um yeah, so rate the food so we had some chicken nachos what were we talking what, were we talking? what was your favorite thing the nachos was, the yeah, nachos, nachos was yeah, nachos, like, yeah, nachos. Like, yeah. I, like, I love cheese, but hear this, I'm lactose intolerant. You know what's lactose intolerant? It makes sense, yeah, 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 Everyone who's yeah. lactose in intolerant love, loves milk love and cheese. cheese yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny, actually. Did you watch um, Did you watch the one show? Did you, did Kevin Hart was on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, someone asked him, uh, I've, got, I've got lactose intolerance, but I love milk and I can't stop having it. Yeah. And then Kevin, it was a thing where they had to motivate the person, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Kevin was like, you do what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> you love cheese, you yeah, go and have yeah, yeah. cheese. It was so funny. I only found out I was lactose intolerant like um, maybe like a year ago. Oh. I was at my mum's house with my missus and then um, she was saying, oh, I feel like you don't react well to dairy. And so I'm just like, no, I've never really taken notice of it. And um, <clears throat> my mum told me, I was like, yeah, you're lactose intolerant. They told me you're a baby. And I was like, okay, 24 years later. <laughs> <laughs> all these so years, bad. I was still going through all this pain and you didn't even tell me what it was. But yeah, nachos, I think nachos are number one. Like, I love Mexican, isn't yeah. it? I like my favorite restaurant, Chiquitos. So um, I love tortillas, burritos, yeah. you know, and quesadillas. And the chimichangas as well. Yeah, yeah. It was all nice, it was all good. Yeah. Yeah. So anything yeah, with chicken good. on it is a winner. We're going, I know this was Mexican, but we had this debate last week. Yeah. And uh, I lost that debate. Uh -oh. But hmm. is it Indian or is it Chinese? Come on, let's oh, go. So we're in the Chinese, I'm sorry. Japanese. <laughs> no, that's why you can't do that. <laughs> Indian or Chinese, I'll read it. You need to be disqualified. <laughs> because that's like going to who wants to be a millionaire and like adding the fifth option. It's A, B, C, D. How can you add E? No. He's right, adding right. E because it's Echo, isn't it? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll go for. It's hard. It's, uh, it's not it's hard. hard I think you have to justify your answer. I could justify mine. Well, I don't want to hear you. Just <laughs> Chinese. 4-1 <laughs> down, lads. I'm 4-1 down. That's four people. No, five, wasn't it? Because yeah. Five, one. It's wow. But is it right? Yeah, is that, was only, that was the only reason. Is it right in saying that Chinese food seems to be a bit more accessible than Indian food? Because I only ever tried Indian food the first time when I went to an Indian restaurant. Um, like... Um, I found that, well, in South East London, there was a lot more Chinese takeaways yeah, that's true, than that's there true. were <coughs> Indian takeaways. The difference is, though, yeah. we, like, my family has an Indian restaurant, yeah. but it's also a takeaway. You can yeah, order yeah. takeaway. I think people, what people don't realise is you, you can go in and actually just get a takeaway, yeah. Yeah, but it looks yeah, like yeah, a restaurant, yeah, yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Whereas Chinese people have one on every corner that yeah, says yeah. China, Chinese even takeaway. The, the care packages now in the yeah. supermarkets, yeah. like, you buy the big bag and it's got all the rice stuff in it. Yeah, man, five one down. <laughs> It's that actually, that's painful. I think you struggle with African people though, because like, we're, we're big on rice, isn't it? Like, yeah. we're, we're, I'm they from Nigeria. They are, they are, you see, but I feel like I've tried both Indian rice and Chinese rice, and I think the closest thing to the rice, like I'm used to, in terms of the taste and stuff yeah. and texture, is more like Chinese. 
We're going to have to change Punch and Munch to an Indian restaurant. <laughs> Sorry guys, we're, we're off. We're going to take it, we're going to take it away from here because this is not going well right now. Um, fair enough. I mean, I just think, I, just, I, I love Chinese, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. the food's amazing, but for flavour. But are you biased because no, your not. family not. owns an Indian, has, has an Indian restaurant? <laughs> I'm not. I you're not. God, but then the thing is, how would you know if you're biased or not? <laughs> your taste, your taste buds can't make this. So no, you, no, you, no, you no. can't tell your taste buds. I, I have, a, I've had Chinese plenty of times. I've had yeah. Chinese. I love me I mean, I love, I love everything yeah, yeah. the Chinese have, and I've also had an Indian, yeah, yeah. obviously. Okay. And I just think flavor-wise, flavor-wise, the spice, the, the even their Chinese spice yeah, yeah. doesn't go well. Like it's like. Be fair, not you're not allowed yeah. to say Chinese better than Indian because because you're in the business and your family like it's bad yeah, for business. I, like you, yeah, yeah. you can't be on yeah. YouTube yeah, well, and say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say yeah, Chinese is better. Like, you, you got to do it. No, just, uh, yeah, I think I, I guess my opinion doesn't matter in sense of. You know, I, I think it because uh, oh, I'm... Don't say I'm, that, but everyone opinion matters. No, but I think in this, in, this, in this quiz, in this quiz, we're 5-0 yeah, yeah. down. So the next, whoever's next on Punch and Munch, this is a public thing. If you do not say that Indian is better than Chinese, we're not putting the one. We're not putting the episode. That's, 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 ba that's basically... <laughs> that's, 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 that's match fixing, if you ask me. <laughs> I just want to move on and I want to talk about today's boxing. You know, uh, the boxing world, what's going on. Obviously, we're in fight week for the biggest fight. Day. <laughs> you have to let that one out. It's, 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 like, it's like a twitch for most boxing fans. No, no. Don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. Don't see it. Yeah. 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 But yeah, we are in the fight week for one of the biggest fights um, of this year with Joshua. Obviously, whatever yeah. fight he's involved in is big. Whether he's fighting the guy from next door or he's yeah. fighting Wilder. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to take your thoughts on this fight, you know, Andy Ruiz Jr. A lot, I mean, that should tell you. I mean, yeah, a lot yeah. of people are saying he's not proven, obviously. Okay. But let's not forget he faced Joseph Parker for the world yeah, title. Yeah. And it was a very, very, very close decision. Yeah, yeah. Joseph Parker couldn't hurt him, couldn't knock him out. Yeah, yeah. And everyone he's faced, Drews looks really good against. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's quicker than. Yeah, the clips I've seen of him, yeah. he's quicker than I thought. You know? yeah. um, but I think. I look at it like this, like. Okay, Joshua, you'd expect Joshua to beat him. Um, I don't think it'll be as straightforward as everyone thinks. I think maybe Ruiz will give him a good maybe four, maybe five rounds. It might be a late stoppage, like a round seven or eight, like how it was with Brazil. Takam. And Takam, yeah, mm -hmm. like, and obviously, just like Takam, they sort of kind of overlooked Takam a bit as well in that fight, I think. Um, but I think Ruiz and, similar thing with Ruiz and Takam, there's no pressure on them. Yeah. Nothing to lose. They, yeah, they've got nothing yeah. to lose. And I thought like a fighter who has nothing to lose is dangerous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything to gain. Yeah, you've got yeah. everything to gain. So it's like... It's your one sentence. Exactly. Even yeah. if he loses and he gives a good account of himself for four or five rounds, his stock goes yeah. up. Yeah. Like that, you, you, yeah. you look at Takam now, yeah. I mean, he's getting the fights. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. fought has already lost, but then he yeah, was yeah. going to fight Usyk straight after exactly. that. So he's yeah. got that market like yeah, attraction yeah, 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 of yeah, people yeah, yeah. like, oh, that's Carlos yeah. Takam. More so because yeah. of the circumstances that surrounding him picking up the fight at such short notice. Sure, mm. Like, he, he, he had two cuts on both his eyes, yeah. and he still boxed through, and it was just the fact yeah. that like, he pushed Joshua, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it will be a good fight. Yeah, I'm looking forward and to that. People forget the fact that Joshua's only been boxing since he was 18, 19. Yeah, That's yeah, 10 yeah, years, yeah, right? Yeah. Just because he's achieved this success, yeah. people got, always have the high standard for him, which is fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. But the fights he struggled in, not, I mean, he stopped him, but like yeah, he's yeah. looked, oh shit, Joshua's done that. Povetkin clipped him, first yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, Takam yeah. made him yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. He said he boxed Parker, which I agree with, but still a lot of thinking game. Yeah. All these fighters, there was one thing that's very similar. They're all very small compared to him. Yeah, yeah. The, the only person to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Klitschko dropped him, Klitschko's Klitschko, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. But everyone else around that size, he's sort of, you know, like the Brazils and yeah, yeah. Charles Martin. I know you can say Charles Martin. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Uh, Charles Martin, you here? You want to come on? Where are you? And he went to collect a paycheck. And home, dipped. Yeah. But... <laughs> And Andy Ruiz, and like you said, them, them clips, they, he looks serious. He looks he does, he better does. than Atakan for me. He looks like, obviously physically he doesn't look great, but yeah. his yeah, speed is a deception. Like... I think so. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Well, what, what's, what do you think? It's just, it just looks the part. Yeah. Yeah. It, looks a lot, it just looks a lot better and probably maybe more seasoned. Yeah. yeah. I think Miller, the main thing was Miller, Miller looks... 
he throws a bunch of punches, yeah, but none of them, yeah. it's still like, bam, 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 yeah. bam, bam, nothing yeah. meaningful. Yeah. Whereas Andy Ruiz yeah. sits yeah. on them shots. From a business perspective, I think obviously Miller yeah. was the better fight. Yeah. Not only because he's from New York, they build up the fight and stuff, yeah. trash talk, all right. Like, so I feel like from that aspect, there are probably some people in the higher hierarchies of businesses who are probably disappointed that yeah. obviously it's not Miller, but I feel like Miller would have been a lot, a, a much easier fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For Joshua, do you know what I mean? Least, I think he would have taken Miller out in like four or five rounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think even quicker, maybe three. Because yeah. I think um, once Miller felt his power, Joshua's power. I don't even it. think he might have not even dropped him. I think he might have just been took so many shots where the ref yeah, would have been like, yeah, all right, yeah. good night. At least Ruiz like gives him a lot more to think about. Yeah. And, like, I'm, t- I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. I would not He's be not surprised if Joshua yeah. Joshua gets hurt in the fight. I can see. I'm not. People yeah. aren't saying it, but I can yeah, see yeah, it happening. A hundred percent can. A fighter who doesn't really talk much. Yeah. The sign about him. Like, about him. Yeah. <laughs> like Takam, Povetkin, and even Ruiz. He doesn't like. Like, oh, you know, man. I'm just going, yeah, stickers, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I hear the stickers Yeah, literally, like, <laughs> those guys there, they're the dangerous ones because they've had a good place, you know, they're happy and they, they, like, they do all their talking in the ring, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, yeah. We're just talking about, obviously, the Wilder fight. Oh, what was your reaction to that? Yeah. Like Matthew Macklin said, that, that, that punch would have knocked out a horse. Like, <laughs> and one of the commentators ferocious. was like, you must have felt that punch in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the greatest of all time, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's the GOAT. Yeah. He's the GOAT of commentary. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name, but he is, his yeah. commentary is just the like best. One of those um, WWF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody stopped the goddamn match. He's <laughs> <laughs> some WWE fights. This, yeah. this, the guy that did the Showtime oh, one. So. Okay, he know. does the WWE and he does um, <laughs> some MMA and he does the boxing Todd for Showtime. Yeah. Todd, Todd, no. Todd you know what? Hold on. We're going to find you and we're going to yeah, give you a shout out. Yeah. I think it's Todd something. Wait. If, it's Todd, if I'm correct, it's Todd Grisham. Yeah. I think. I think. But um, and yeah, definitely is. no one saw that punch yeah. coming because Wilder did get hurt in the fight. He did! Yeah. I think, that, no, no, like, I think are, yeah, the didn't, knockout was that emphatic realize. that people were not really highlighting the fact that he when, didn't get hurt himself. Yeah, when Wilder yeah. had Brazil beaten on the ropes, even Brazil caught him with a straight right, which, which rocked him. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And Wilder had to hold on, which was, was interesting. So, with like heavyweight boxing, man, I don't think there's such thing as having a chin, first yeah. of all. Yeah, yeah, you can't. There isn't such thing. You can't because they. Well, well, holes, so every single one, we've seen Joshua get knocked down, we've seen Fury get knocked down, yeah. we've seen um, uh, Joshua, Wilder, Wilder sorry, Wilder, Wilder, Wilder get rocked a few times, yeah. uh, Dylan White getting knocked, knocked down. Is it how Fury got back up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Channeled the powers of Undertaker. I like, <laughs> I like Tyson Fury. Moro Ronaldo, I think his oh, name okay. is. So he does the okay. WWE next gen oh, stuff as well. Okay. I like Tyson Fury, but I have a feeling that... Um, I think Joshua has more of a chance against Fury than he does Wilder. I don't know. No, not, not, not in the sense of the, yeah. if he gets touched by Wilder, then... You don't know if he'll yeah. get back up. The problem yeah, because he is, it's like a wild card. Yeah. Wild, yeah. Wild but against like, Fury, yeah, Fury moves, but... He's, he's, it would frustrate him. Yeah. It would frustrate him because I feel like he played it down, but Parker frustrated him a lot for 12 rounds. And Fury says Parker's a cheap man's, a broke yeah. man's uh, Tyson Fury. <laughs> and Parker's like, and the thing is, I feel like where Parker is different is that he doesn't have the mental edge where Fury will frustrate you physically and mentally because every round is calling you a dosa. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you got. And I, I don't know if Joshua <laughs> has had someone like that because that much. I feel like, Smart. okay, Klitschko, Klitschko is, um, is different because um, he's a gentleman, he carries himself. But I feel like, has Joshua ever had someone who's coming to the ring who's not take, who's not kind of affected by the whole, mm. it's Anthony Joshua? Because I think a lot of fighters, you fight AJ, are kind of like, Oh, it's the, the occasion yeah. gets better. Yeah, it gets the better rhythm. I do think that as well. It's a bit like Tyson, isn't it? Like yeah. you say, oh, I know a fighter's last when I look him in the eyes, like because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's Tyson. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what would have been interesting about Miller, I think, because yeah. Miller didn't seem like he gave a damn. Yeah, the way yeah, he yeah. pushed Joshua, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, he, he made him look skinny. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did. Uh, he did. Yeah, yeah. I think I was a drugs man. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was pumped. <laughs> uh, what, what's your take on the drug situation? I'm asking, uh, that's one question that's been repeating out of my mouth when yeah, I interview yeah. anyone or whoever comes up punching much. You're a professional boxer yourself. Yeah. So when you see that someone in your profession is doing such a thing where in, in a sport like this, even if you don't mean to, you can hurt someone in such a way, yeah. what's your take on it? It's a hard sport anyway. I mean, just to stand out from everyone else, like best training techniques, so and so is using this this SNC person, 
so and so is doing yoga, this person's doing that, this person's swi swimming instead of running. As as, yeah. Like, it's, it's just such a, like, it's a, it just brings your mood down when you think, oh, there's, there's people out there at, at a high level using drugs to yeah. help them be better than yeah, other yeah. people. It's just like, just yeah. level the playing field, yeah. let's cut it all out and let the best actually be the best. Yeah. Yeah. What's even more sad is that, like, I feel like even at the highest level, at the high level is worse because these guys have money to afford yes. the best, yes. mm. the best um, supplements, but only the best, you know, I don't want to call them thing. scientists, yeah. who may not all be good, who, like, the technology is so advanced that they can even create drugs yeah, that can yeah. mask certain yeah. drugs. From and then certain water tests. takes a year to catch up with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Savannah Marshall was uh, speaking, I was speaking to her on one of the interviews and she says she believes that a lot of people at the high level, yeah. more than me know, take I supplements. So and one thing she said to me that struck me was, she was fighting on the Channel 5 show that was on yeah. recently, how those t shows don't get tested. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. fighters do not even get tested in that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there could be sh fighters at low level, yeah, high yeah, level, yeah, everyone yeah, is yeah, taking yeah. drugs. But yeah. And also I feel like with the way technology is now, like with drugs testing, you have to know what you're testing for. Yeah. Mm. Like, um, first of all, I feel like it's hard already when the whole how the drug things works is confusing. That's why I see a lot of fighters like Dylan White got caught out for taking an over the counter. Yeah. Was it Enzo or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got, got banned. banned two years. Two oh, years. Damn. Yeah. Good Enzo Macronelli got banned for taking um, some antihistamines in America. That part of the basket. So Billy Joe Saunders got banned. Yeah. And the interesting thing about that was Billy Joe Saunders got tested for that in the UK, but that's illegal in the UK and it's not in America, which... Yeah, yeah. so it's funny, like, first of all, already, there's one side where, you know, fighters are trying to get uh, the physical edge and, like, get something that separates them and makes them, like, you know, box better. But I think it's the other side of where, you know, there are the, the, the genuine innocent people who, mm. you know, due to confusion, lack of knowledge, rules being here, rules being there, I feel like there needs to be one international body that builds a board. I was going to say, we were, we were yeah, talking yeah. off camera about this. The one thing about uh, boxing that's way far behind than all the sports, sports yeah. is we don't have a body. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's FIFA for football, yeah, you know, yeah, in the, yeah. even in MMA, like they have UFC, they have yeah, Bellator, yeah, yeah. one championship. It's all scattered. It's yeah. even worse in America because it's different state States, laws yeah. and yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's almost like, you know, you, I mean, you're, you're English champion now. Um, which gives you a good position, but you still have to work for to get onto like a a, a, a matchroom show or yeah, a BT yeah, show. Yeah. Whereas you know some guys might get there with business, you know structures, and it's annoying if you had one governing body that decided plenty of things. Yeah, yeah. It would have been a lot easier for yeah, people yeah. not only to get on fights and get on shows, but you know yeah. do the right things and not. Mm. Mm. No one fights anyone no more. Yeah, <laughs> it's, everyone's. It's, it's, Everyone's trying to do yeah. the Mayweather. Yeah. yeah Everyone's yeah, protecting. Yeah. Do you think Mayweather had a bad effect on boxing? Um, a bit more a, positive. He had a positive effect, yeah. and it, he kind of showed boxers that you can take a bit of the power and back to yourself. Yeah. You can do things yourself. You can promote. You can do this. You can do that. Um, but I think it's just how people, what to, what, how the industry took away from that. Like now, people are too scared to get into a certain fights that yeah. they might lose because they want to protect their own. Yeah. But it's not really about though, it's about who you fight to yeah, preserve yeah. it. So, it's good enough saying that so, you try yeah. to approach a promoter with your record. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, it's true. It's, it's the true. business yeah, that, That's well. what I mean, like, you, you, some people get one loss and they think they're done, but it's not the case. There's like Pacquiao. Pacquiao wasn't, didn't have the best of records yeah. before he, All he the greatest had that, fighters that, have lost. that part of his career where he just exploded yeah, yeah, onto the scene. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I mean. Whereas if someone did that now, people wouldn't look at them the same. They kind yeah. of think, oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's, but we've got some great he's not quite there. Yeah. The States, you've got Tevin Farmer, which yeah. was never too late. Yeah, 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 he obviously yeah. lost yeah. five, I think, and now he's IBF World Champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The fella at the weekend winning the Super Featherweight title yeah. as well. It's business, it's business orientated, yeah. man, because like, um, one thing I've noticed as well is that, you know, because boxing is such a business now, there's a lot more to it than just what you do in the ring. It's the outside, it's the whole package, it's your sponsors. Mm. And media. businesses yeah. who are sponsoring fighters who may not even have an interest in or have knowledge of boxing is, oh yeah. wow, you're undefeated. You could yeah. have boxed 20 nobodies. Like I, like me, yeah. like Echo will tell you as well, like 
you can be a solo solo champion. How many fights you have? Oh, you're undefeated. And yeah. you know I mean, it's just, yeah. it's the whole. Do you know what? There's, yeah, yeah, there's, the there's, the there's yeah, there, there, there's gone so much effort into getting uh, casual fans into yeah, boxing yeah, yeah. that we're doing, we've, it's been overdone yeah, to yeah. the point where now, like you said, when you yeah, say, yeah. oh, I'm seven and oh, yeah, yeah. you've won seven fights in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is but nothing, because you could box seven yeah, nobodies. Yeah. 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 Like, so, yeah. yeah. And I feel like I love that there's loads of organised, um, um, like, uh, world titles. A lot, there's a lot of world titles. But at the same time, I feel like it's kind of, that has also not helped as well. Mm. Too yeah, many there's that time. argument as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it. Th I don't think there's a problem in sense of the four titles: yeah, yeah. WBA, you know, IBF, or, WBC. You think even all the other ones like silver, this. No, but when we say that, I do think there should be a interim. Yeah. But I don't. I don't understand what. Um, silver. I don't understand what an international one yeah, is. I don't, yeah. I don't understand what a global heavyweight. Yes, that's what yeah. That was the yeah. WBO. Global global what's yeah. a global? What are we on then? <laughs> the global is basically their version of the silver, isn't it? Yeah, but what's Regular. global? Isn't that the yeah. earth? Isn't that yeah. the world? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just another word. Is there some? Is there a country missing out yeah, that yeah, they yeah. can't box for the global title? <laughs> like, it's crazy because I was watching a documentary like years ago about um, Sugar Ray Robinson. Right, he, he was in a time where there was only one world title. Yeah. If you lost it. You lost and you fought the person that you lost to to win it. Like he yeah. won and lost the title so many times there's only one belt and uh, undefeated records wasn't the thing. They boxed yeah. a lot more times though. But yeah, I feel like it's it, it's great that boxing is appealing more to the casual fans, but I feel like also at the same time, there's pros and cons. Like I was saying to Echo when they were here that, you know, um but it's great to be part of boxing now because it's buzzing. Yeah. But it makes it that much harder. Because yeah. because it's buzzing so much and because so many much more casual fans are involved. Promoters and stuff are are having, you know, let's say the casual the, fans the more at heart. Yeah, the desensitized to your accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now Whereas it's before all, you could have right? yeah, yeah. before you could have accomplished something and that would make you stand out from yeah, all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. But now it's like yeah. you, you can accomplish the same things and it's kinda of just like well, yeah. it goes a bit like when I use this person, and I'm a massive fan of this guy, yeah. um, but it, it makes a bit of sense. You know, Dave Allen, yeah, yeah. we know he's improved, period. Yeah, he's yeah, beaten yeah. some good guys now. Yeah, yeah. But for him to keep getting the opportunity at the Bills yeah, yeah. is because of who he is and how the yeah, following yeah. is built, yeah, exactly. which is fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it just gives, it makes you look yeah. back at the guys who are really working. Yeah, 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 and it, yeah, yeah. It, That's how boxing is now. Like I said, like, because of how big boxing is now, which is great, it's a gift and a curse at the same time because a promoter is not only focused about putting on a show full of great fighters, he has to put on a show full of great fighters with great entertaining styles and yeah, entertaining that personalities to fans, yeah. that appeal to fans, do you know what I mean? You've got to have the whole package, yeah. do you know what I mean? You've got to be able to talk in front of the camera outside and stuff like this. It's, it's about building a card that, yeah. that people want to watch, really, yeah. which yeah. is what you want to do, but you also want to have the right people on the card. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's a tough one. We don't know how it's going to be figured out, but yeah, hopefully some know. sort of promoter comes around soon. Uh, you never know, we might as well take Viper Sport and make it into a promotional company. Could yeah. do that, could do that. <laughs> make sure you come to Nottingham, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll be like the Oscar de la Hoya. <laughs> <laughs> headline the card, <laughs> dual headline. Um, all right, lastly, before we finish off, obviously, uh, want to touch on your careers a bit more. Uh, what's next for you, where do you when you're sort of looking uh, to fight? some bids with the British Boxing Board for the British in the pipeline. And um, my way there, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. If I have to take a few more names, then I have to take a few more names. Um, Who's the British World Tour? Um, Chris Jenkins at the oh. moment. He's defending it to, what's his name? Liam Taylor. Liam Taylor. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be gunning for both of them or whoever else is going for the British as well. Yeah, we'll like there's other boxes like Conor Ben's been shouting up about it and, and a few few others. But I feel like get yourself up in that contention in the rankings and then do it where it's sound of instead of going for that straight B line mm -hmm. to it. But all those other guys are here and mm -hmm. yeah. What is that? You mentioned yeah. Conor Ben there, but the welterweight division is very interesting. You got Josh Kelly as well, yeah. who you, who you yeah. spent time in the GB camp with. Would you, what, how do you rate these guys are coming up? Obviously, they, they're probably getting a bit more sort of coverage as they're with the bigger promoters. Yeah. What do you think of them, like Conor Ben? Um, Conor Ben, I feel like he is, he is improving. Um, he's learning from fight to fight. Um, he's not, I don't feel he's not quite British level yet. Um, who am I to say? But 
if the fight ever happened, I'd be happy to take it. Yeah. I mean, if it was for a British or an, an eliminator of some sort. Yeah. Um, Josh Kelly at my weight is higher up in the rankings than I am. And obviously, just just for that, he's someone that I would obviously love to have a fight against yeah. in the future. Um, trained with him on GB and whatnot. Uh, and I feel like our, our stars would make up for a very entertaining fight. What do you make of Josh Kelly's side? Because I'm a huge fan of of Kelly's style. Yeah. I think it's it's um, demonized a bit because of, you know, he doesn't, his style almost limits him to throwing as much sometimes because his hands are down, his head's moving. Yeah. What do you think of that style? Um, I think the style suits him. Yeah. Um, his mentality towards fighting and whatnot. I think, yeah, it does suit and it keeps him kind of on the edge, triggered and whatnot. Um, I have a very similar, similar way of thinking, but for me, I'd rather get the job done. Yeah. So then, in, Instead of looking good, doing certain things, I'd rather just mm. finish it. Finish it. <laughs> I think that style works until yeah. you get hit. <laughs> well, he tripped a few times in his yeah. last fight, um, and uh, well, he didn't look phased by it, but I, I don't know. It depends the higher you get, you know? Yeah, it's all right. Like, you get to a certain level where certain boxers will punish you for giving away them silly shots here and there. Mm. So it's just, I mean, everyone's still learning, so you can't really criticize people too tough because. You can only fight who's in front of you, yeah. so True. that's all it is. I think like everyone at the higher um, parts of the like British ranking, obviously world ranking and whatnot, it's only a matter of time before you eventually fight each other anyway. So yeah. it's all about keeping yourself in that contention for that chance. 100%. What about yourself, Mr. Um, Ultimate <laughs> Boxer Champion? Um, so, like prior before the Ultimate Boxer, um, I was actually put forward for a million zero title shot, yep. which didn't materialise, which I guess was a blessing in disguise because it paved the way for Ultimate Boxer. So um, I think for me, what's next is I see the Ultimate Boxer as a launch pad, but I'm not using it as a shortcut. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to keep my feet firm in the ground. I know that with my ranking now, I'm in the position to start pushing for some local area titles, maybe the English title, but um, I want to go back down and you know have a couple more six, maybe eight rounders under my belt. Um, just because I, I just want to go through the challenge properly and get as much experience as I can. Um, there's no need for me to rush. At the same time, there's no need for me to relax. Do you know what I mean? Go at a good pace. So I think, you know, get get a couple of eight round there's six rounds under my belt. And I think then we'll start pushing for some titles. Like I want to go through the ranks properly, you know, a bit like the way Echo's doing it. You know, go for either the area titles and the English titles, then the British, you know, European stuff like that, Commonwealth. And then, yeah, but ultimately the aim is to become world champion. But short term, longer rounds and start pushing for some belts. You know what I mean? If you can get a belt um, before the end of the year, great. Um, if not, maybe early next year. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, if we speak to you in 12 months' time, what, what, what would your ideal situation in your career be? 12 months' time. So that takes us to May 2020. Um, by that time, I would have loved to either picked up a local area title, like the, like the Midlands belt, or be scheduled to at least fight for the English or something like that. Well, that's what I'm looking towards. And yeah, just in a position where, like, you know, um, where I feel like we have uh, maybe a, a proper promoter, a big promoter behind us. Because obviously right now it's been great. Like, um, uh, well, for the best part of our careers, we've kind of been, you know, free agents, I saw yeah. per se. Like Echo will probably explain a bit more that like he was yeah. wearing at one point. Um, but like, with the way boxing is now, um, it's kind of hard, you know, uh, because there were pros and cons of either. And I feel like we wouldn't have got to the stage in our careers that we are now, if not the fact that being free agents allows us to be a lot more active. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Be able to be on yeah, different, yeah, yeah. different shows and different So promotions. I kind of feel like we've got yeah. ourselves into position, in the position that we're in now a bit more quicker than the fighter with a big promoter because we've been able to be a lot more active because yeah. There is a lot less uh, restrictions on where we can fight and who we can fight and stuff like that. Yeah. But obviously, I feel like we're getting to a stage now where, you know, to start knocking on the door, some big opportunities. You obviously, you need to have you the need, right back in mind. Yeah, new promoters behind us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain the situation with uh, being with Frank Warren. And um, well, I was with Warren and I had um, one match with him under under his promotional banner, and then um, there just weren't really matches available for me to have under him and we were given the uh, opportunity to find our own mat matches obviously keep me active as well so um, through doing that that's how I got my um, chance to fight for the English against Andy Keats um, obviously I got that chance and then I got the then next would be uh, a chance to defend it 
Um, so obviously I took that as well, but those two opportunities clashed with certain other opportunities um, with the promotional outfit and it didn't make sense to turn down the, um, the chance to fight for, for the belt um, in, to be on a, say, normal promotional show because I, I needed to progress in, at a certain level. Yep. Um, and so that, that's what led to me becoming a free agent again. Um, however, um, th those things are in the past and we, we are in talks with, with um, obviously different promotional outfits, in including Warren again. Because um, obviously we're at that point in our careers where we need that to platform push, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to push. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have a lot to offer because Nottingham is full of good boxers. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw we, <clears throat> I mean, the Nottingham Next Gen show was really interesting. Yeah. We had a few fighters from Nottingham on there yeah. itself. And when we were there for the press conference, a lot of the guys from Nottingham were saying, you know, how it's disappointing how you don't have the big shows there a lot of the yeah, times yeah, anymore yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of talent coming out of the city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, the promoters like, Eddie, Warren, you need to get yourselves back Trust in Nottingham. Me. I've been messaging it's Eddie. Like, I saw Eddie at the scene. press conference, actually, for yeah. the next gen show in Nottingham. I said, look, so when I'm in the my boxer, you're going to sign me, right? And he was laughing. He said, we'll sit down and talk. I'm still waiting to have that chat, Eddie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, now. In, the words of, in the words I'm of Tom mad. Little, Eddie. <laughs> but no, but yeah, like like yeah. I said, we're not, we're not, um, we are not oblivious to the fact that you know you can have it all in the ring now. Yeah, but, it, but you need the whole. You need that. And and that and as my good friend Uncle T says, yeah. hashtag follow the money. Yeah, trust yeah. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but but yeah, yeah, man, big things to come for this camp, man. I mean, it's gonna be. I feel like there's still a lot more to come from 2019. And it's just setting up for even bigger 2020. So yeah, yeah. man, you, you, you should be hearing about us a lot more. Yeah. See a lot of us. yeah, definitely. Well, it was an absolute pleasure speaking to the pair of you. Thank you for coming down and oh, taking up your time. Yeah, no problem. So, much, so uh, we hope to get you on again soon. Yeah, man. Thank you. 100%. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you.